Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you 10 quick and easy tips to help you with power supply enclosure design for your 3D printer. This is going to be really useful for anyone who's upgrading the power supply as a result of maybe already upgrading their heated bed and needing to supply more power or people designing a printer from scratch. This video is a continuation of the Formbot upgrade series. So if you want to see more about this process of upgrading this printer into something that's safer and probably better, then check out the link in the description below. Tip number one is to remember the assembly process. This is also known as designing for assembly. In this case, we're going to be designing a full enclosure around this, well, around the end of the power supply. We're not going to have access to any of the wires really, apart from the output when we're finished. So you need to understand that as you start putting things together, you will lose access to parts of that assembly as you go. So you need to understand the way in which things are going to assemble to make sure you've got access to the right terminals and wires when you need them during that assembly process. If you don't take account of this during your design, you may find that as you start putting it together, you just physically can't turn a screw that you need to because it's now hidden behind a panel that you've just assembled. So just take account of it and think about it as you go. Tip number two is to screw on one of the sides. Of course, we're making a full enclosure, but that doesn't mean it has to be permanently solid. Having one side that screws on gives you some access to the inside, even after it's assembled. But to do this successfully, I'd suggest doing the bottom panel and having the wires pass through it. So in order to do that, we do make, need to make sure that the holes that we're passing the wires through are also capable of managing the connectors. Now, to do this, we could just have massive holes in the bottom of the power supply but we don't really want stray fingers or anything to be able to get up into there. So what we do is create this small slotted hole at the bottom and have a small cutout to the edge. So as we paste the panel on the bottom, the wires can be slid in through the small cut and then they're perfectly well managed. Tip number three is this very neat nut push out trick. You may have seen square nuts assembled by sliding them into the side of a plastic bar, but quite often, is impossible to get them out again. There's no way to push typically from the other side. So why don't we add a hole for that? This is really simple and a great trick to help you get out nuts if you decide you don't want them in there or if you're going to throw a part away and you want to salvage the parts from it. Here's a great example of that. The panel that we're removing at the bottom of the power supply uses four screws to attach it. And I've integrated four slots for four nuts to be slid in so you can hold the panel on. The reason I'm not using maybe hex nuts that push from the back is that when I'm assembling the power supply, I don't want the nuts to fall off the back. This is quite easy to do as you push a screw in, it can push the nut straight out the back and that's it. It's either lost into the power supply, which is very bad, or just into the enclosure and you have to rattle it around and get it out again. So what we do here is modify the sketch where the nuts are placed and add a secondary rectangle next to the initial one that attaches where the nut goes to the outside of the print. Make sure that this is in line with the direction in which the nut is pushed in so you can use the hole to push it out again. I set mine to be two or three millimeters wide but it's going to depend on what tools you have available. Something like a sim card slot tool which is a very small tool that you can push into a small hole could be useful depending on the force you need to apply and how stiff the nut enclosure is and those sorts of things. Once you've done this you'll probably see that you now have a hole from the back so you can't push the nut all the way through and out the other side. It still gets positioned in the right way when you push it in but it means you have a small hole that you can force the nut out if you need to. Tip number four is to make sure that you've managed your wires with zip ties. We don't want wires just dangling out of the power supply because if they get tugged, they're gonna be pulling on the terminals of the power supply and that's really not something you want to be doing. So a great way to resolve this is to fix the sheath or the sleeve of the wire to the power supply enclosure. For that, we can use a zip tie. Now, I already explained my very easy zip tie trick in the previous video, so again, link in the description below and that will show you how to add that in. In this instance I've added it to the removable plate at the bottom where the wires come out and it just simply cinches the wires to that plate so they can't be tugged. When you're adding the zip tie make sure you push the wires in a little bit so they've got some slack on the back side and then that should work just fine. Tip number five is going to be to have the mains inlet on the same box as your power supply. As you can see on my design right here I have this little cutout on the side with two holes which houses this power connector. The power connector has a inbuilt fuse and a switch, so it's a great way to have a mains inlet to your power supply. If you're designing a totally low voltage printer that just uses 12 and 24 volts, well, 12 or 24 volts typically, 
then that means that your, all your mains power is just enclosed in one unit, which is probably quite a bit safer. In my case, I have a mains powered bed, so I do still need mains coming out of the power supply enclosure, but it's still nice to have everything in one place with one connector, one fuse, and one switch. Number six is to try to separate the mains and low voltage connections on the inside of the enclosure. Now, this is not really easy to do, and there's still gonna be electrical interference. It's not a perfect scenario, but the one thing that I'd like to try and avoid is that if something came loose, it can't fall onto something that is of the opposite type. So if a 24 volt connector touches another 24 volt connector, that would be bad, but it wouldn't be like the worst thing in the world. However, if we had mains connecting to a 24 volt cable that then goes to the rest of the printer, that would be very bad. So on the inside of this enclosure, I've added a small wall that separates the low voltage section from the high voltage section. I don't know realistically exactly how well this is going to work in the long run, and if it's going to make much of a difference. But for me, it's a little peace of mind that there is some separation between that high voltage and low voltage connection. Tip number seven, like this, is to make sure that your screws are the right length for the power supply that you're using. Fortunately, I have salvaged four nice countersunk screws that I can use from the original form bar on this one. But if you don't, make sure you're getting the correct length screws for the power supply. This is especially true if you're screwing it up through the base of the power supply where the PCB is just on the other side. If you screw too far, you can either damage the power supply by breaking the PCB or you'll end up with a mains connection straight to earth and then you'll blow a fuse. As long as you've wired it correctly, otherwise it could be even worse than that. So just make sure that the screws are the right length. They go into the enclosure, which will be earthed, again, provided you wired it correctly and then only maybe one or two threads beyond that. You don't want to be going far into the power supply. It's just not a good idea. Number eight is another one about screws, potentially the same screws, but the opposite end. When you're fixing the power supply to the frame, if you're doing it like me, then you'll have screws on sort of all sides of the power supply where you're fixing it to the enclosure. Of course, you do want to probably mount it flush to the frame. So you want to just be careful, monitor where the heads of these screws are, if you do need to model them into your CAD model, then do that, so, so you know what's going where. But you just need to monitor that, that you're not gonna have screw heads that stick out into somewhere that needs to be flush. Where you do have screws and you are mounting to a flush frame, you can use a countersunk screw. This is the type we have the kind of the V and then the flat top, and that can sit flush against your enclosure, add a little chamfer to the 3D printed part, just like I've done here, and that will then create a flush mounting face. Tip number nine is to style it up a bit. <laughs> so this power supply box can end up just looking like a really plain box. While it does obviously have a really great function, it's nice to make it look pretty cool too. What I like to do is use the outside face to add a stylized logo or other design. What I've done is import an image of the Vector 3D logo onto that face, drawn around it, and then just extruded and added a chamfer. So I've got the Vector 3D logo on the side of the power supply, and I think that looks pretty neat. And the final tip, number 10, very simple. Add a small tab to the top of the power supply that uses other screw holes that are away from the base just to add a bit of stability to your whole assembly. If you're mounting it vertically like I am, typically this can be maybe a little bit redundant, but it's nice to have nonetheless. If you're mounting it horizontally, then I would definitely recommend having this as it gives you additional mounting points which will help with overall stability of the power supply. You don't want it dangling, breaking, wobbling around. Just not very good. So that's it for my tips and tricks. The design is now complete. We've integrated all of those points into the design and we've got something ready to print. So let's print it out and assemble it.
So there we go, power supply successfully wired up and mounted onto the frame, ready to go. If you are following along, do not plug in the mains at this point, you have live wires sticking out the end, just try to resist plugging it in, it's really bad idea. So at this point we've got everything mounted to the frame which we need, but we still need to wire everything up. However, to add wires, we need drag chains. So in the next episode, I'm gonna show you how to implement drag chains properly. I'll give you some design tips and how you can do that. Of course, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss it. For now, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.